So in the month of August, I read six lovely books. Um, I really wasn't disappointed by my reading in August, which is a nice thing because I was really getting back into the swing of reading coming off of my internship. So let's just get right in. So the first book I read was Security by Gina Woolsdorf. It, I read it on the plane back from Colorado, which is like a four hour ride. And so I wanted something that wasn't too short, but wasn't too long, and I could just read on the plane and enjoy it. And I heard really good things about it from Squibbles Reads here on book two. And so I went ahead and downloaded it on my Kindle and read it in the play, on the plane. And I have to say, this book did not disappoint. I loved it. It's a horror book, so if you're not really into that kind of thing, I wouldn't go for it. It's, it's got mystery thrown in there. It's really quite good. Um, basically, a hotel is about to open, a very high-end hotel is about to open the next day. However, the staff is there trying to get everything set up. And it has some really high-tech security, this hotel. It's meant to be the type of hotel where people with money can come, do what they want to do, and the world will never hear about it. So it has quite a bit of high security. So the staff is there trying to get the place ready. Unfortunately, there are people trying to kill them. <laughs> so the whole story is about the murders and basically, are they going to survive? <laughs> To, someone's trying to kill off staff. Are they going to survive? This was a very successful novel to me. It was solely about that. It was about the security. It had some interesting twists and turns. It was really quite ruthless and I enjoyed that. It wasn't really hunk, all hunky-dory and that was really nice. It still threw in a great pop plot line in there between the main characters. It was mostly like a, a kind of love interest type thing but it definitely wasn't a romance novel. And the writing was good. I know in the, the print version you can read different paths to the same story so it can have a different version depending on how you read it. A different ending, different plot line depending on how you read it. Because I was reading it on my Kindle it was just one storyline and that was a-okay with me. But I loved it. I mean it kept me engaged the whole plane ride. I barely noticed the turbulence which is <laughs> really annoying. Um, and I really want to purchase it for my bookshelf. So all in all, I think I gave this book four stars and I enjoyed it. So then the next novel I read was one that I purchased as soon as I got to the airport and knew I would read it when I had a moment to savor it at home. It was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And I was really hesitant about delving into this book because I was in that generation where Harry Potter was everything. I was there for um, when the books would come out at midnight, I was there for every movie. I've been to Disney Universal to see Harry Potter World, both parts of it. And I just, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, like most people in my age range. And so I was a little hesitant. Like, I don't, it's a play for one, which made me a little leery of going into it. I mean, plays inherently can only do so much world building, they can only tell you so much. Um, but I just, you know, I'm a fan, so there's no way I wasn't going to read it. So I went into it, I read it, it was a very fast read because it is a play. There isn't a bunch of word um, world building. It's a script, so it's not like paragraph after paragraph. So it was a really quick read. I have to say, they called it, they marketed the book as book eight. No, <laughs> it is not. It is nowhere near the usual J.K. Rowling world building, in-depth storytelling, connections from books past, foreshadowing, it's none of that. Okay, it's a script. It's a lot of just telling you what's happening very quick. It went through a lot of information in a very short amount of time. I basically call this a piece of fan fiction. It's not really, I think they should have just left it as a play. Never marketed it as, marketed the book as an eighth book. It's not that. It's, it's a piece of fan fiction. It tells you stuff you wanted to know. You wanted to know about Harry Potter's child later on. I mean, there, there's stuff it tells you, but for the most part, it's just a piece of fan fiction. I really wanted it to be better. I gave it three stars. I love the storyline. I love you get to see more of Harry, more of Hermione, more of Ron, and all the characters around them. 
you get to see more of Harry Potter. And that's something I'm happy about. I could have been happy with just the seven books. I would have been fine. They were a great seven books with a beautiful ending. But at least I learned more. I love to see the play. I don't know how they do some of that stuff on stage. It's a little intricate. But still, I'd love to see the play one day. But yeah, it was a piece of fan fiction. It didn't even need to be as long as it was. And I think they should have just left well enough alone. The next book I read was Shelter by Jung Yun. Yoon? Jung Yoon. Um, this is a pretty hyped up book. It's a thriller. A lot of people talk about it. It is basically about a family and something tragic happens. Kyung Cho um, has a wife and a child and he cannot, they cannot afford the lifestyle they're living right now. They're having lots of troubles and one day a uh, realtor is over to show his house and they see this woman naked outside. She looks like she's in distress. He goes out to check it out and it turns out to be his mother and he goes home and finds his father, finds his father stabbed and his house just in complete disarray. And no, I'm not spoiling the book. This happens all in the first chapter and some of that is told to you on the book jacket. So yeah, that happens in the first chapter. Everything that happens after that is in response to that. It has some good twists and turns. It really delves pretty far into the emotional context. You get a lot of information here. You get a full story and it's a great thriller. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I read it in one sitting and then I read it again <laughs> because don't do that. I shouldn't do that, but I do that sometimes. Um, and I just, I think this lived up to the hype. I was very happy about that since I purchased a hard copy. Um, it lived up to the hype. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars. I did think it lagged a little in the middle there. Um, I think it kind of had some superfluous information. And um, she could have done without it. It could have been shorter. That she, he could have been, it could have been shorter. But I mean, I don't think it took away from the storyline. I just thought it was unnecessary. Uh, so I gave it four instead of five. But it was still a good book. I would still recommend it. Um, this is the U.S. cover. There's a different cover if you were in the U.K. or anywhere else. And I just really, really enjoyed this and I'm glad I purchased it so I definitely recommend this book. Next up I read The Humans by Matt Hay and I read this because I am part of a group, a uh, Goodreads, Goodreads group. It's called The Next Best Book Club and it was the book for the first half of the month, the group read group discussion book for the first half of the month. It's not my typical type of book. It was fiction. It was humor um, but it was smart humor and so it's not my typical book but that's why I'm in the club to get me to read books that I wouldn't normally read. So I read it. It's about um, basically an alien society coming to the US. Um, there's this mathematician who has solved this huge problem and aliens come to earth, they kill him and he he's impersonated by an alien and the whole story is about that, um, about whether this alien is going to carry out his mission that he's been given or whether, you know, living with humans is going to change anything. So I have a full review up on my blog, so I'll link that below. But yeah, I read it. Um, I just don't think it's my type of story. Um, and I knew it might not be going in. I appreciated a lot of the dry humor in it. That was fun. I do think that the plot took an interesting twist. Um, not so great, really. It kind of changed tracks halfway through. It had the alien having a certain personality it, and his interactions with the people around him and his wit coming from that. And then halfway through the book, so, there was a really sudden change. And if there had been build up to it, if there had been more storytelling around it, that would have been fine. But there was just this really quick change halfway through and I just didn't think it was believable or written in such a way that I agreed with it basically. So I just had to decide to give that three and a half stars and I got that half because of the level of wit and the first half of the book I really enjoyed it but second half, yeah, my hate kind of went off the beaten path. However, that's my take on it. That's how I feel. Other people love it. It's just it wasn't the best read for me, but I did read to the end. I wanted to DM DNF it, but I didn't. I read it all the way to the end because I was discussing it. So 
yeah three and a half stars not my favorite read of the summer but I read it so next up we have The Vegetarian by Han Kang this is really short um, and this is another book that has had quite a bit of hype around it um, it is not about vegetarianism yes a woman goes vegetarian and she it's a big big deal um, and she, it's a really really big deal because in her culture people eat meat <laughs> it, being a vegetarian is not a thing so she goes vegetarian and it is a huge deal for her family as a result she faces a lot of issues there's this book deals with mental health it deals with physical abuse it deals with a whole whole lot really in such a short amount of time um, they call it Koft Kafka-esque and I have to agree with that um, there's a lot a lot of symbolism in this book a whole lot um, I read it twice again it's really short but there was just so many poignant topics in this book and I I mean I just had to read it twice to really take it all in um, it's I mean you really just have to read it to fully understand but I really really enjoyed it I thought the writing was superb um, there was no lag all the storylines were um, drawn together nicely everything was flushed out by the end there was enough there were enough unanswered questions as there should have been in this plot line to make you think about the subject matter um, but there were enough answered questions to make you think even further about how you how I treat people and how I think about mental health and you know just what really matters and my stance on things and how strong I feel about my stance in life about various subjects so I really enjoyed this I think it's definitely a worthwhile read I purchased a copy and I think you should too I gave this five out of five stars I saw nothing wrong with it I loved it and I definitely can recommend it to anyone so the last book I read uh, in August is one of my favorite books of the entire year. It is Homegoing by Ya Giasi, and I just put up a review of this on my blog if you want to read that. Um, this book got a seven dollar seven figure advance. I mean it was that anticipated and for good reason. If I could give this more than five stars I would. Homegoing um, is a story of two women in Africa. This is in this is back in the 1800s during slavery or pre-slavery depending on how you look at it and these two women take totally different paths in life but they are sisters they never meet each other one ends up in slavery and one ends up staying in Africa and you get to see her each woman's generation to the present from then to the present you get to see her life cycle the next generation the next generation the next generation until you get to the present not just that though you get to track how the original generations traits track down to the current generation you get to see how the choices of one generation affects generations to come you get to see how the various events through history have affected not only Americans, African Americans, but Africans, and how the slave trade affected us all, and the disparity there is between African Americans and Africans in America, as well as in Ghana. This is based in Ghana, which is one of Africa's largest cities or largest countries, not cities. It's not a city. City. One <laughs> is. Uh, one of the places with, with its largest population and a hub for the slave trade really um, so it's just amazing her writing is so good I was pulled in from the very first chapter it took like I've sat down this is my slow read for the month so there are books a book that I pick every month to read slowly um, I, this happened to be the discussion in the literary fiction by people of color group Goodreads group this month so I waited to read it till then, but I read it in three chunks instead of just sitting down and reading it like I often do. Um, and I did not want to stop. Like once I finished that first chunk, I did not want to stop. I, I did. I forced myself to stop and I got on the Goodreads discussion group and wrote a post about it. 
but let me tell you, I did not want to stop. The writing is just so good. You want to know what's going to happen generation to generation. There is a uh, timeline at the beginning. And normally I hate timelines. They get on my last nerve usually. But it really, really helped to pull the story together. It was actually an addition that was helpful and not just there. I referred to it several times. And the storyline all in the end pulls everything together from the first generation to the last or the current generation. It pulls everything together. It's really quite incredible. It had to take an immense amount of planning to do what she did with this book. And each person's story could leave you unfulfilled if it didn't all pull back to that first generation. And it makes it a story about the whole and not any individual story. And that makes it even more amazing in my eyes. I mean, this is a masterful work. The writing is amazing. It is. She did a lot of research to pull in these events from today. I mean, she pulled in slavery. She pulled in um, escaping slavery. She pulled in African Americans migrating from the South to the North. She pulled in heroin and the uh, heroin, and then she pulled in cocaine from heroin from the 60s and cocaine from the 80s and its effect on the African American community. She pulled in police brutality. She pulled in African immigration or migration to America. She pulled in Africans going back to Africa. She pulled in African Americans not wanting to go back to Africa. I mean, there's just so much in that book. I could have, it could have been 600 pages and I would have been happy. It's only 320. But that's okay because she pulled every last storyline together by the end. It was so good. I cannot recommend this book enough. The, I will put links below um, in the description box as well as on my blog to purchase this book because I think you should. If any of these books I've talked about, if you purchase any, don't purchase any, purchase this one. This one's amazing. It is an instant classic. classic. It is one that children should read. It is one that adults should read. It deals with so, so much. African Americans will freaking love this book. Um, and people of other colors, don't get me wrong. Immigrants will love this book. They will, Immigrants to America will identify with a lot in this book. People of other minorities will, um, minority classes will um, identify with this book. And I think it's something that white people should read. Caucasian Americans, British people, white people, I'm literally talking about white people, should read so that they understand how deep the history is and how deep this stuff goes. Um, there was a Black Lives Matter book list going around on booktube and this should definitely be on there because you really get to understand how our history has affected all that we do up to this moment. And I just, I cannot recommend this book more. If you only purchase one book this year, this should be it. So that's all the books I read in the month of August. Um, I can tell you a few that I'm gonna read in September. So in the month of September, I'm going to be reading The North Water first. Um, this was given to me by uh, the publisher through Goodreads to read and discuss in the next best book club. So I'm definitely starting this one. And my slow read for the month is Underground Railroad, The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. This is Oprah's book pick for the year. And I've just heard so many good things about it. I heard an interview um, by on NPR by Colson Whitehead. And I just went ahead and purchased it because I just, I, I think it's gonna be great. Rincey Reeves gave this one a great one um, review. So I'm gonna read these two. First up in September, tell me what you're reading right now. Tell me if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them. And I will be sure to do book reviews on these on my blog. There are other book reviews on my blog if you want to see them. I know I've reviewed Security and Homegoing and The Humans. So I will leave those links below. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. And check out my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the blog. See you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. I would summarize every paragraph so it may seem like overkill but you don't want to have to go back and read this again you want to understand it the first time you read it